Hello, I am Gary Brantner of Rent Arp Studios Comics, and this is the show where I talk about comic books I've read, Kickstarters I've backed, and where you can find these comics and the Kickstarters, and all that fun stuff. So, uh, first off, I'd like to say uh, that I recently just watched the first three episodes of Invincible. Loved it, and uh, highly recommend it. It is not for kids, though. So, uh... Be careful who uh, you let watch that with you, and uh, yeah, Invincible uh, has been a favorite comic book of mine for a decade now, and uh, yeah, um, I started reading Invincible, uh, let me backtrack a little bit here for a second, because I might as well go into uh, one of the comics I read this week was Invincible Trade number one, and uh yeah, this is uh, by Robert Kirkman and, uh, oh my gosh, where's Corey Walker and William, William uh, Crabtree. Let's see here. Yeah. So there's the cover, and uh, it's got amazing art, as if you are unfamiliar with Invincible, uh, you are going to love this comic and the TV show. Uh, so, how I got into uh, reading Invincible was back, way back when I was a kid, uh, teenager, I don't know which one, yeah, I think I was a teenager, uh, I used to read a comic book called Wizard Magazine, and uh, I read it up through my 20s, and uh, I think, I think I was in my 20s when uh, I read in, in, in Wizard a uh, little synopsis about um, Invincible here, and uh, I remember that they talked about a character named Duplicate, and Multiple Man has always been my favorite character, so uh, when I heard there was a character that named Duplicate and her power was to self-clone, um, I was interested in Invincible. And then I heard about the Mahler twins, how uh, he constantly keeps cloning himself so that he has a partner to work, do his crimes with, so, so that was a really cool uh, twist on things too, is that the Mahler twins, like, they are, one is a clone of the other, and you don't know which one is the clone. He doesn't even know which one is the clone, and I think that's part of his thing is he always tries to one-up himself by uh, outsmarting and doing smarter things and doing a better crime than the other clone, and so he's like, you must be the clone because I'm doing this better than you are. It was, it always cracks me up. I love clone humor. Anyway... And yeah, the Duplicate thing, I love Duplicate, she was one of my favorite characters, and I do wish there was more Duplicate in the comics and the TV show, but who knows, that they're doing a great job so far, I love it. So in this comic, uh, the character Mark Grayson, he, uh, he meets the teen team, as you can see on the back cover here, it says Mark's first team up, and it's a little picture Polaroid uh, magneted to the refrigerator. And so that it's pretty cool stuff. Um, on this team is uh, Robot, Adam Eve, and Rex Explode, and Duplicate. So that was pretty cool. And yeah, I really loved it. Uh, the TV show did a really great job on it. It's on Amazon Prime. And uh, yeah, I I loved it. I'll probably watch it again over the weekend during my lunches because I work weekends and. Uh, yeah, I'll watch it during my breaks, and just, I don't know. It's a good time, good show, and uh, the voice acting is uh, amazing in it, and uh, the animation was awesome. I love it. I don't know if uh, it is a Robert Kirkman, so uh, who knows if he's going to go the Walking Dead route and change things for the TV show as that are different from the comic book. I don't know, but it is... It is awesome to see the things that uh, I've read coming to life, and uh, there I noticed some tiny changes here and there, but nothing like overtly uh, out of the way from the comic book like The Walking Dead did. We'll see where that goes. Um, but yeah, check out the comic book. I highly recommend it. Uh, Corey Walker is an awesome artist. He was not on the book as long as uh, Robert Ott, or <laughs> Ryan Otley, but uh, they both did an awesome job, and it's uh, it's really cool to see uh, their style up on the screen. 
And I can't wait to see more of it next week, next Friday, another episode hits. So uh, that's all for uh, Invincible right now. Next up on my list is one called Lovecraft P.I. Now I first became aware of Lovecraft P.I. through a Kickstarter where uh, he joined for he joined forces with uh, Miskatonic High. It was Lovecraft P.I. meets Miskatonic High, and uh, I wanted to know more about it before the uh, Kickstarter campaign ended. I found uh, Lovecraft P.I. on Etsy, and I got trades volumes 1 and 2 here. I, I will be reading volume 2 soon, but this was volume 1, and uh, I got these trades from Etsy. They came with a postcard. That's pretty cool looking, huh? It's awesome. It even has the uh, information and stuff about uh, Lovecraft PI on the back, like a postcard. And then I got this awesome uh, bookmark with it. Cool stuff. So, yeah, Lovecraft PI, it's, it's awesome stuff. Let me give you the credits here. If I could find them. Oh. Alright, so Lovecraft PI is written by D.W. Kahn and drawn by Daniel Savila. That's a strange spelling on that. I don't know if you can see that. Check that out. Sajila. Sahila? I don't know. Um, if you would like to help me on the pronunciation, give me a call or send me a video. That would be awesome. So, Lovecraft P.I. Oh man, it's an awesome book. Uh, I love the art style. It is very dark and grim and very fitting for a, a Lovecraftian kind of story. So in this story, uh, Detective Lovecraft is uh, hes working on a case where out in the uh, middle of the swamps of Louisiana, there was a ritual going on trying to invoke the uh, spirit, the being Cthulhu into existence and yeah that's crazy stuff if you know what I'm talking about and there's a lot of other mayhem stuff going on crazy stuff he meets a viper lady who uh, has no legs she's just a tail pretty crazy stuff and yeah I really really enjoyed this story it was it was very well put together very well illustrated, very well told. There's Cthulhu himself. Very menacing looking. Huge. Because uh, as you can see, I don't know if you can see Lovecraft in the shot, but man, it really puts him into scale that Cthulhu is that big and that little dot right there is supposed to be Lovecraft. Detective Lovecraft. So, yeah, a lot of cool stuff. A lot of good storytelling and uh, wrapped up really good. I can't wait to read the uh, the uh, next volume and see where it goes from there. Good stuff, indeed. Um, yeah. So and yeah, I can't wait to see uh, what happens when Lovecraft PI, which this takes place in the 30s, comes across uh, Miskatonic High, which takes place in our our time, current time. So, yep, good stuff, good read. If you want to find this, go to Etsy and search for Lovecraft PI. They ha he has uh, bookmarks, pins, prints, all sorts of fun stuff, stickers. So check out Lovecraft PI on Etsy right now. Now, uh, on to mailbox. What have I got in my mailbox? I got a lot of stuff in my mailbox this week. So... Uh, I got the next disc in uh, Picard. I think this is the final disc. Yep, disc three of season one of Picard. It was, man, so yeah, I can't wait to dive into that when I have some time. But Picard, they're doing an awesome job on it and uh, really good stuff. And I also got the 27 run cra crush. Sorry, 27 Run Crush. This is hardback. It's got spot gloss finish on it. Really cool stuff. 
And it came with a sticker. This is from A Wave Blue World. I got this on awaveblueworld.com. So that's pretty cool stuff. A lot of good stuff here. Oh, shoot. And I just dropped that sticker. <sighs> Don't want to lose that. So check out that. Uh, it's going into my read pile. I will give you a full review of it once I read it. It's really cool. Uh, it's a cyberpunk kind of world, so that'll be a cool one to read. Can't wait to get into on that one. Next up on my list is OBS, A Devil Went Down to Georgia. Yeah, this is one I backed on Kickstarter, got in the mail, love it. And there's currently an OBS Kickstarter running right now, which I have not backed yet because I haven't read this and I don't have an opinion on it well enough to back it. It's kind of weird when Kickstarter goes the day after I get it in the mail, so I don't know. We'll see. I hope I read it get uh, before. I'll probably bump it up in the read pile since it's running right now, but um, yeah, we'll see. Uh, maybe I'll get a chance to read it. Definitely won't be able to read it over the weekend, so I'll be in trouble there. Hopefully, the Kickstarter's going long enough I don't miss it. Here's loot. I just got loot in the mail from scoutcomics.com. Uh, I was just scrolling through their comics and I recognize the artist of this, Kaylin Smith from uh, from the uh, For Goodness Sake series that I'm reading. So I, I recognize the art style and I'm like, oh my gosh, that looks awesome. I gotta get it. It was $1.99. So I, I grabbed the loot, threw it in the cart, and uh, I got By the Horns in the same cart. From Kickstar uh, from ScoutComics.com, pretty cool stuff. Uh, I almost got the subscription box because they had a special um, edition of Soul Searchers with a uh, Connor Hughes artist of White Ash co cover on it, but I don't know. It was uh, thirty-nine dollars for the box with uh, twelve Scout comics in it included in it. Just random. They do the subscription where they just send you twelve a month. And uh, I don't, I don't know. Uh, money's kind of tight right now, so I've got to kick, I got to cut back on my kickstarters. And it, as you can see, that's really hard for me because, uh, yeah, I'm getting a lot of cool stuff in the mail. And uh, here's another one I just got: Sithra, Volume Five, Book Five. Sithra from uh, Jason Brubaker. Uh, man, these are good stuff. Hardback. This is a web, webtoon comic that uh, he prints in hardback. He's good. He does some good stuff. Um, I'm supposed to be getting a b book called Phobos pretty soon with a glow-in-the-dark cover. I don't know what's going on with that one. I'm pretty sure I ordered it with this one, but who knows what's going on. Yeah, I really don't know. Uh, I forgot all about this one. I thought it... and uh, it just showed up. Next up on my list, uh, I did a run to my comic shop, Gamers Asylum in Ogden. Gamers Asylum is, I think, it's a, my comic shop is local, but it's not close. So it's rare to, that I could even go around and pick up my stuff, especially during a pandemic. Uh, I think I've been going every two or three months to pick up my comics. And uh, so I finally did uh, Gamers Asylum in Ogden, Utah. If you are in Utah, check them out. They're awesome. And I got the uh, trade set of It Eats What Feeds It. It's also a Scout Comics. And uh, good stuff. Oh, let's see. So yeah, I got eat, It Eats What Feeds It. I got the Ash Can a while ago from Scout Comics. I think they sent it to me for free because I don't remember ordering it. But I was hooked. Um, so I had to get that. It was in the Ash Can was only four pages. And seriously, it hooked me just on four pages. So check that one out. And another one I got is called Tart Soul Searchers. This one is awesome. I've read the tall Tart uh, trade volume, and it was it was insanely awesome. So I put when I posted these pictures uh, online that I got it from the comic shop. I found out that there was a, con a contest going where if you I had already posted it, and after the fact. Uh, Kevin Joseph said, hey man, uh, post it 
with the hashtag uh, Soul Sur Searchers, Tart Soul Searchers, and uh, you'll be entered into a contest. And then later that night, I get a, a message from him, and he says that I won. I won this original art. Check that out. Um, it is awesome. I can't believe I won some original art from uh, Hell, Hell Strawberry is sending it to me, or drew, drew this, astronaut. It's really cool. Uh, Ludovic Sally is the uh, real name of Hell Strawberry. They're Hell Strawberry on the Twitters. So, cool stuff, really good stuff, and uh, Tart Soul Searchers, can't wait to read that one. Good stuff. And uh, next up I got on my list is X Factor. I have been reading X Factor as long as I have been reading comics, but uh, unfortunately there's no multiple man in this one. But from what I've been seeing on the uh, Twitters, this is going to be so awesome. Uh, yeah, it's got Polaris in it, so that's someone I rec remember from the uh, original X Factor. And uh, yeah, other than that, it's, some cr it's got a crazy cast, so we'll see where that one goes. Crazy. Um, and then I got Amazing Spider-Man Volume 11 here. Um, I think I'm behind on it because the next in my read pile is Volume 8. So, this will go in the read pile. Good stuff. Um, so that's the end of my uh, mailbox grabs. And now we will move on to the Campaign Corner. The Campaign Corner is the section of my show where I talk about the Kickstarters and Indiegogo campaigns that you need to know about. Oh. Sorry about that. So, first up on my list is a comic book called Nil. N-I-L, number one. Nil is about a survivor of a decimated tribal nation, and he battles his anger and grief as he integrates into modern society with his dinosaur companion. The art style is amazing. Uh, man, I wish I could draw that well. The, pre the preview pages that I looked at uh, are just amazing. Uh, the way they draw the the main character has a tattoo, a Maori looking tattoo on his face and uh, yeah it looks amazing and uh, he hangs out with a dinosaur. That's pretty cool stuff. So check out Neil on Kickstarter right now until March 26th. Ooh, that's tomorrow. I think. Is it? I don't know what day it is. What day is it? Yeah, it, oh man, that's today. March 26th is today. Holy cow. So, check out Neil on Kickstarter right now. It could be over by the time this uploads. So, I hope you see this in time. And uh, check out Neil, number one, on Kickstarter till March today, 26th. Heaven's Bestiary Enamel Pins is on Kickstarter right now until today. This has hours left, apparently. It is a set of 12 pins that all depict the a Chinese zodiac, and uh, it's a combination of white, black, and gold in the designs, and uh, really cool looking. Uh, you can get a random pin set to you, sent to you for nine dollars, or you could choose the pin you want, the zodiac you want, for ten dollars, and then if you want more, the price just keeps going up from there based on how many pins you want. I think there's a really good deal for them if you want all 12 pins. And uh, check out Heaven's Bestiary Enamel Pins on Kickstarter. You know I'm a pin collector, so that's pretty cool stuff. It is on Kickstarter until only today. It's done. <clears throat> New on the list, Astounding Tales, A Golden Age Adventure for the Modern Age. Modern Age? Did I say that weird? Astounding Tales, A Golden Age Adventure for the Modern Age. What's worse, doing math homework or taking on a giant monster? If you ask Billy, she will tell you that even for an android, it is hard. It is a hard choice. Oh, sorry, man. <laughs> Whew. Another drink. Anyway, this is a story about an android named Billy. And uh, she goes to school one day, and a kaiju uh, steps on her school bus. This is I'm getting all this from the uh, preview pages I read. Anyway, 
Uh, so it it starts a disaster, and she goes. There's one other schoolmate on the bus with her, and she goes to save him. And the end result is she finds out she's an android. And she had no idea, uh, and so she confronts her dad about it. It's kind of an Astro Boy scenario where I guess she was in an accident, and he rebuilt her and downloaded memories into her. So really cool stuff. There is a so this is the issue one for it, and I guess there's an issue zero. And I opted to get the uh, issue one and zero, and then clone copies of it, because uh, I have a friend that's really into this stuff. And so I'm getting one copy for me of one and zero, and one copy for my friend one and zero. Really cool stuff. It is on Kickstarter. Astounding Tales, a golden age adventure for the modern age on Kickstarter till March 29th. So it sounds like you have three days to get that one. Of the same coin, a detective investigator, uh, Tommy Wright, and private... In oh man, I don't know which is which here. So two different investigators, one's private eye and one's a detective for the force. They both believe that they are working epitomes of justice but they are on opposite sides of the law. This is a 32-page gritty crime thriller based in London. Check it out. It looks really cool um, from what I was looking at. Another one with really good artwork. Amazing stuff. Of the same coin on Kickstarter until March 31st. Chronicles of the Immortal Swordsman, number one. Now this is a, uh, a sequel or more in the universe of The Adept that I just recently read and reviewed. And, uh, yeah. A young, a young man's heroic awakening into an ancient order of supernatural warriors is facing a new civil war. Immortal's story verse continues. This is from Adept, as I was saying. Phil Dew yearns for something so awe-inspiring and indescribable that it overwhelms him. But in his life, Phil, but his life is filled with struggle. As he is a parkour, he parkours under the guise of Iron Pond, his alter ego, in a virtual fantasy game, and he is beginning to have visions of strange things. And uh, let's see here. So Jade swallows. Uh, Jade Swallow appears to him in real life, and in his game. Okay, interesting stuff. So check out Chronicles of the Immortal Swordsman on Kickstarter till March 31st. The Speed of Light. Speed of Light is a black and white sci-fi anthology. It is nine eight-page stories by different creators. Some of those stories will contain will continue and some of them will not. So this is 72 pages or more in total. The art looks really good from what I've seen in the uh, previews of it. This is on Indiegogo right now. So check out Indiegogo and search for Speed of Light comic book because it looks like some good stuff. And uh, one of the other campaigns I'm going to talk about later, I think, coincides with this Speed of Light. So check that one out. Speed of Light. Starside. Starside is a comic bu book that I uh, found on Twitter. And I've been a fan of it since issue one. So this is con Starside comic is continuing on with issue four here. It is going to be on Kickstarter till April 1st, April Fool's Day. So check out a sci-fi fantasy book about a team that gets thrown into an intergalactic uh, mission. And it's an intergalactic war. And he's just trying to find his sister and make his way back home. Crazy stuff, and uh, really good stuff. The artwork is amazing. Uh, so far I've got a, an enamel pin that I... Sorry, I don't know why I touched my cheek. Uh, I keep it on my face mask. That's where I wear my enamel pins for right now. And uh, anyway, I got a star side emblem on that I sometimes wear in my face mask. Really cool stuff. I love it. It's a great pin. And so far it's a great series. I can't wait to get issue four. Man, uh, I might have to go reread re re issues one through three when I get four, because it is so good. I love the art style. So many 
bright, vibrant colors in it. And uh, Starside is on Kickstarter until April 1st. 4th. Fool's Day. Sorry. Love enough on that one. Alright. Where No One Grows. A mental, metaphorical and atmospheric 24 page full color comic journey. This is a continuation of a story where no one goes and the next one is the current one is where no one grows. See the tie in there? Pretty cool stuff. I like the way they did that. Anyway, these are about uh, the main character is Marlo and uh, the whole the whole comic book seems kind of uh, in a dreamscape kind of place like um, Adventure Time or Over the Garden Wall kind of thing. Really cool stuff. Marlo's the main character and everywhere she travels she has a chair strapped to her back uh, on a backpack or something. And another ca other characters in this comic are The Date, Skeleton Girl, and Flame Monkey. And Flame Monkey is exactly what the name entails. It is a monkey that is on fire. So check out Where No One Grows on Kickstarter till April 2nd. Sex and Violence Volume 3 is a 64 page adult graphic novel. Excessive nudity and violence in it. Um, it's really, really good looking stuff. Um, I'm getting one with a Frank Frazetta cover on it. Frank Frazetta is a longtime fantasy illustrator that is, I'm sure you've seen his work. Uh, his John Carter stuff is amazing and uh, yeah, so I can't wait to get this. I have no idea what the stories are going to be like, but it's got an amazing uh, ensemble of creators on it. Jimmy Palmiotti, Justin Gray, who did uh, The Standstill that I've been reading, Amanda Rancelot, uh, sorry, Amanda Connor, uh, who is has done some work on the Harley Quinns, and, and Sarah Frazetta. Uh, Frank Frazetta's daughter. So, really cool stuff. Check it out. Um, Sex and Violence, Volume 3, on Kickstarter right now. I, if I see Volumes 1 and 2 pop up, I am going to jump at the chance to grab them. And I'm not talking about digital. I want the physical copies on these. Really cool stuff. Um, Sex and Violence, number 3, on Kickstarter till April 4th. Planer Jane, number 2, is a modern day story of murder. And this is issue two of a darkly, a dark, darkly comic story. Okay. This is issue two of a comic story that is about a Jane Pearson. She's a seemingly ordinary teenage girl, but she is very efficient at killing. And the whole series is 150 pages broken down into single issues. So this is the second of, well, I don't know how many 150 breaks down into 24s, but... It's going to be quite a bit of series issues. Anyway, the the whole thing is drawn in black, white, and red. So that's pretty cool stuff. It looks awesome. And, uh, yeah, I'm in. Uh, I'm, I'm getting issues one and two because and, this is the first I'm introduced to this series. But, uh, yeah, they have a, a tier where you can get issues one and two together. It's the catch-up tier. It's on Kickstarter. Planer Jane, number two, on Kickstarter till April 8th. Ooh, here's a here's one that I really enjoyed reading. Impossible Jones, number two. Uh, Impossible Jones and Holly Days team up in this issue, and uh, it's a girls' night out of hilarity, hijinks, and hidden secrets. 32 pages by Carl Kessel, who worked on Harley Quinn, and David Hahn, who worked on Batman 66. So get ready to meet the bad guy Krampus. So Krampus is like the Joker to uh, Holly Dace's Harley Quinn. So that's pretty interesting. I can't wait to see where that's going. And I can't wait to get this comic in my hands because I really loved Impossible Jones 1. It was good stuff. The art was crazy. The story was amazing. Right up there, I um, likened it to Incredible, I mean Invincible, where uh, the feeling I got from reading Impossible Jones. So check out Impossible Jones 2. Impossible, uh, blah, blah. Impossible Jones and Holly Days team up. Check it out on Kickstarter till April 8th. Alright, Jember. 
Jember is okay. Wait, I've, I'm already screwing up. Jember becoming somebody hardcover is on Kickstarter right now. It's a 112 page graphic novel about action adventure. It's a story about finding your self worth and letting go of what others think of you. With a foreword from Maza Magistri. I don't know who that is really, but uh, all right. So, uh, Jember is anxious, he's frustrated, and he's ready to leave this city that uh, hasn't been kind to him. So, suddenly, uh, jobless graduate Emmanuel Jillahan gets abilities that change his life, and he must choose to help himself or help the city that has been crappy to him. And nobody... Nobody see or nobody is seeing him as a hero. They see him as a threat. So check out Jember becoming somebody on Kickstarter till April eighth in hardcover. For goodness sake, volume three. Oh man, I can't wait to get this one. The story is really cooking up, and uh, really good stuff. The artwork is amazing, and this is going to be the final issue of the three volume set of for goodness sake so check it out get all three volumes if you're new to it and uh, go to for goodness sake volume 3 on Kickstarter and before April 9th check it out there's this there's this character named Thatcher and uh, he did something bad in his life to be cursed and every time he is not a good person his skin turns red horns grow out of his face and uh, he just looks like a demon and the more good things he does, he goes back to humanoid form. So check it out. There's this free-spirited girl named Rain who is just escaping her troubles in a, in a uh, big school bus that she lives in. And uh, she's trying to get away from things, and she decides to make it her mission to help Thatcher. So it's Thatcher and Rain hanging out together. Who knows if, what's going on? And uh, yeah, things are really getting crazy. I don't want to spoil it for you, but do check out for goodness sake, Volume 3 on Kickstarter till April 9th. Green Inferno. The world celebrates your demise. A 200-page anthology series of original horror fiction and comics from international groups and creators. <clears throat> Lurking just out of the focus of our peripheral is a, a stark realization realization Plants, the planet's tolerance for humankind is at an end. Uh, they can't, nature can't stand us anymore, and this is stories of nature gone bad against humanity. Tired of all of our pollution and everything, and do check it out. Um, yeah, 200 pages of awesome art. Green Inferno, the world ce celebrates your demise on Kickstarter until April 12th. Here's another OBS one. That's the one I just got in the mail. OBS Vampersol. Okay, I cannot pronounce that. Vampersol dot. Vam is vampir. Okay, OBS Vampersol dot number one is about Dimitri and the OBS team are called to investigate a derelict hospital ship that is infested with bloodthirsty monsters. Um, one of the things that jumps out at me is uh, Carola Barelli is one of the uh, artists on this, and she's done some good stuff that I liked in her Destiny New York stuff. That's one of the reasons I backed the uh, other OBS that I got just got in the mail. So I'm going to uh, hopefully get a chance to read that tonight while I'm at my uh, plasma appointment. And uh, by the time I'm done with that, maybe I'll come home and I'll back this OBS Vampires sold at number one. Oh, man. If there's any way you can help me on pronouncing that, do send me a video and uh, tag me in it on the uh, Twitters or something. So, because, man, that one's a tough one. This one is from Evolution Publishing, and, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty familiar with their stuff. I backed quite a bit of their stuff in the past, and, uh, 
They are currently running this OBS, Vampires, old at, until April 14th on Kickstarter. Okay, Lethal Challengers. Cat, number one, is, oh man, is from the same team all over again. Evolution is doing this one as well, and all the covers look amazing. Um, these are space bounty hunters that uh, go from planet to planet looking for bounties. Really cool looking stuff. Um, and I think it, oh man, I can't remember what comics connect to it, but I just read some. Oh, it's escaping my mind right now. But I, I know I just read some that was about these guys. Anyway, this one is a 32 page comic book. Um, it connects to that speed of light one that I mentioned earlier on the uh, Indiegogos. This is Lethal Challengers Cat number one is on Kickstarter till April 14th. So do check that one out. The Dancer number one is on Kickstarter right now. The Dancer number one is a psychological martial arts thriller. A dancer assassin is forced to deal with her childhood trauma of witnessing her parents' death while also being an assassin. So check it out. Really good stuff. The artwork on this looks amazing. The story sounds amazing. So I cannot wait till I get my copy of The Dancer number one. It's on Kickstarter until April 15th. Dusk, or The Dusk. The Dusk is on comics right on Kickstarter right now. It is comics' next great crime fighter, The Dusk, in an original hardcover graphic novel from the artist of The Impossible Jones and Batman 66 that I just mentioned earlier. So that's one big draw for me. Um, so I'm going to be checking out The Dusk on Kickstarter till April 22nd. Gardner. The Gardner is a space western about acceptance and survival on a failed colony planet. It is a deluxe hardcover edition, 232 plus pages of standard size comic book, with a touch of biopunk, body horror, and a whole lot of mystery. So from the looks of it, it's a trippy looking comic. Um, it feels kind of trippy and real at the same time. Uh, the way they just do the colors and the textures and the drawing style of it. It's about an android or robot that uh, that uh, goes from planet to planet, something like that. Uh, well, he's on this on a filled colony. It says anyway. It looks awesome. There is e there's even an awesome looking pin involved in this Kickstarter. So do check out the Gardener on Kickstarter till April twenty second. And Sparrow number one. Oh, that one is just in my. Uh, notify me on launch but if you're interested in Sparrow number one I don't know anything about it yet because the notify me on launch doesn't tell you any information so check out Sparrow number one notify me on launch check it out uh, I'll have more information when it finally launches so do check that one out so what have I been watching lately WandaVision's wrapped up and done as you know and um, Picard is what I'm going to be watching soon I just watched the uh, Snyder Cut, Justice League. It took me uh, a couple days. I think I started it last week, and I finally got done watching it yesterday or last night. So it was interesting. Um, yeah, I don't know really what to say more about it. Um, that Now I don't even know how much longer I'll have HBO now that I'm done watching that, because that was... I'm, I got onto uh, HBO mainly to watch Wonder Woman, and uh, now that, and I've hung on until Justice League, but now that that's over, I don't know what I'm going to do. Don't know if I'm going to keep watching it, because I did enjoy watching all the uh, DC shows that were on HBO Max, but uh, there doesn't seem to be any sign of new seasons showing up anytime soon, like Stargirl or Titans. So, anyway, and as you know, I'm watching Invincible. It's awesome. Do check that one out and Falcon and the Winter Soldier. It's really cooking up. Uh, I'm halfway through the second episode right now. Good stuff. And, uh, yeah, if you know of 
any uh, TV shows I should be watching, go ahead and hit me up in the comments, or hit me up on Twitter, Facebook, whatever. Say, hey, you should check out this show. Um, there is one I do want to watch called, uh, oh man, I, I lost it. Alan Tudyk's in it, and it's about being an alien. So, uh, but I don't know what I can watch that one on. So we'll have to check into that. The podcasts I've been listening to lately are um, Geek History Lesson and Off Panel. So check out those. Um, and whatever, I don't know what happened to uh, Two Scout Geeks. It's a show where two guys used to go on there and talk about the comics that Scout Comics was releasing. I don't know what happened to that. They haven't done an issue or an episode since the fall. So I'm kind of missing that show, especially where I've been buying a lot of Scout comics lately. But we'll see. And for the love of Indy, uh, I think it's been a year since an episode of that's released. Anyway, if you have a podcast of your own and you think I should check it out, or if you know someone who's doing a podcast about indie comics or anything, say, hey, check out this podcast. Because I, I do have long drives to work and it's nice to have a podcast to listen to on the way okay so let's see what's going on with me lately uh, I have been working on my computer trying to get my microphone working so I can uh, do some screen capture videos showing you how I color comics but that's slow going I, I have my computer knowledge is really lacking don't know how to fix that and uh, let's see here. I'm working on building a bathroom downstairs, but we've hit some a snag where uh, my plumbing e expertise and my father-in-law's is just not not at a place where we can uh, install this toilet and shower and all that. So until we get more figured out, we're at a standstill on that. And uh, yeah, family life is going great. Um, all my kids are doing awesome, and uh, we just hang out all the time, and what, my daughter is getting married soon, so that's pretty crazy. She was over here last night going over wedding details and planning, and uh, man, it's crazy to think of a daughter getting married, but it's happening. And I haven't fired up my kiln yet to test it out because... Uh, my wife's worried about me doing it in the house. I don't know. No conventions or anything going on. And uh, we're still planning on a trip to Hawaii as a family because uh, I got some stocks building up at work and uh, the stimulus check and all that. So, um, well, my wife and I are uh, members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And so we are pretty regular, we're, well we were pretty regular temple goers uh, before this COVID hit. We haven't actually been to a temple since last March. So wow, it's been a whole year when my wife used to go weekly and I would go whenever I could. So that's pretty crazy. As soon as the temples open back up in Hawaii, uh, that's when we'll want to go because it'd be really, really hard to uh, go to Hawaii and not be able to go through those temples in Hawaii. So that's crazy. My uh, wife and I are going to be celebrating our 22nd wedding anniversary. So that's pretty crazy. I can't believe that uh, she has stuck with my goofy -ness, goofy face, goofy butt, whatever you want to call me. Uh, I can't believe she's stuck with me for 22 years, but uh, she is perfect for me. I love her and uh, even though she's not into any of this stuff that I talk about, she is into me, sort of, I guess, enough to bear with me for 22 years. So, that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I don't really know how we're going to celebrate other than uh, we're just going to get a hotel room away from the kids for a night, get some takeout, eat in the room, and uh, all that fun stuff. I, I still don't trust eating at a restaurant, so... We'll just do the takeout in a room and spend some time with each other. So, yeah, if you know of any comic book, uh, or if you know of anything that I should talk about, podcasts, 
Kickstarters. If you have a comic book on your Etsy or your own website or anything, if you have an indie comic that you think I should check out or talk about, please hit me up in uh, the Twitters and the Facebooks. Email me at peterpanthevampire at yahoo.com. There's tons of ways you can get a hold of me. And uh, let me know about your stuff, and I will look into it. And I think that's a wrap for today. Yep, that's all my notes. So I will be seeing you some other time. Uh, I got some dishes to do, so I better sign off now. It's been fun.